Hi everyone, Brightphone here. I'm back with another video and Happy New Year to everyone. Since many people have asked, I'm going to go ahead and start our series on creating a red team phishing infrastructure. Uh, this is basically what I set up for my multi-factor phishing video that was my most popular video. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly how to set up a red team infrastructure for phishing and specifically multi-factor phishing. So we're going to start with in this video, we're going to show how to pick a good domain name. Then we're going to show in the next video how to authenticate that domain name with SendGrid. And then in the final video, we will show how to set up Evil GoFish. And Evil GoFish is the combination of GoFish and Evil Jinx 2 and just some best practices around setting that up, changing out some of the lures to make sure you have the most up-to-date lure. And then we'll test it in the end of that third video in the series. So I'm gonna be releasing these weekly uh, along with several other different types of videos coming to the channel. We're gonna start doing security certification reviews because I've had requests for that. And as well as just, you know, general red team tips, hopefully coming out weekly. Uh, so let's start with our picking a good domain name. So picking a good domain name for phishing infrastructure can be kind of challenging. Uh, what you want to do is you want to find some information on your customer ahead of time. What domain names do they use? You can do simple OSINT to find, OK, what are some domain names associated by them? Just do a who is and you'll be able to find, OK, they're using, you know, for example, what I have here in my lab, hacklab.com. So then you would take and you would run that domain through some tools to try to find something close to that that a user might not notice when they're taking a quick glance at an email, right? So if I take hacklab.com and I run it through two of these tools, it's going to give me a whole bunch of different variants of the domain name, right? So what I'm going to do with hacklab.com is I'm going to run it through URL crazy and DNS twist. So URL crazy is a Ruby tool. It used to be part of Kali Linux embedded. Uh, and it just goes through and it kind of creates basically the same thing as DNS twist does in a Python way. But it gives you a bunch of different variants on a domain that maybe you didn't think of. And they're close enough in a lot of cases that you might be able to register that domain and use it for a phishing engagement. So we'll go ahead and we'll get URL crazy going here. And then over here, we're going to do the same thing with DNS twist. So DNS twist, we've got DNS twist dash B. This gives me the banners if it's already registered anywhere. And M is the MX records. So I can go get MX DNS records from anything out there that's already registered. So we're going to twist this up and we're running URL crazy here. It's going to take a little bit of time to run these. So while we're letting that go, Another really cool tool that I use when I'm trying to figure out a good domain name is expireddomains.net. Now expireddomains.net, really cool. So for, for example, if I wanted anything like hacklab.com, I can just search for it and it's gonna give me different variants of that, yihacklab.com. And it also will tell you if these are available and their reputation. So why would you want this, right? You would want this because these domains may have been registered for a while. It may not, may not be new registration, which means in a lot of cases, you can buy the reputation of a previously used domain. This is great from a URL filtering perspective because if it's already got a reputation, they don't update the reputation like every day in your URL filtering categories, right? And another thing you wanna do to get around SSL decryption in a lot of cases is you want to go for domains that are related to either medical or pharmaceutical type things or finance because organizations are really scared to decrypt SSL going to your bank accounts or your medical records because there's liability there. So a lot of cases when you register a domain, whether it be for phishing or C2, you want to make sure you're registering either a financial classified domain or a healthcare classified domain. So let's take a look at hacklab.com here. If we just do a simple search, we get these, but we should have some variants now from our tools. 
And let's see, we've got hawklab.com here. And that one looks like it's registered somewhere. So let me go search this on URL, uh, expireddomains.net, excuse me. And let's see if it's available for purchase. So if I search this here, this one is available for purchase. 4,960 US dollars. In a lot of pen tests, you might just use that money and buy that domain for that particular pen test, depending on how valuable that is. But you can also see, is it in the Alexa top 1 million, when it was registered, all of the different details around expireddomains.net. Now, one thing to mention about expireddomains.net, this is something you need to learn about, right? You need to read the details of what this stuff means, because there is a lot of in-depth information in here that is not immediately apparent when you're looking at it, right? So there are lots of different links in here that can give you information about what the tool does, right? Introduction to the member area. This one gives you kind of all of the details of what each of these things are. So that way you're not looking at something and you don't make a mistake and accidentally think you're buying something that you're not. But read this, look into it. This is a great tool when you're setting up a phishing infrastructure or setting up some kind of C2 for a red team or pen testing engagement. Now, if we go back here and we take a look at these as well, we're going to see all these different types of domains that were generated by DNS Twist. And some of them, like this one, are very close to what a user would see. Your brain just kind of walks right over that, right? So you would you might see this and not even pay attention to it. The ones that are registered though, make sure you're either buying that domain or that you don't reuse it, right? If you reuse the domain, it won't work. You're gonna end up messed up. You won't be able to send mail, you'll get hit by mail filters, you'll get hit by you know SPF verification, DMARC, DKIM, those kinds of things. So make sure you're not using one that is previously registered or you are buying a domain that is previously registered. And you can take a look at URL crazy. It does most of the same things, but it also kind of comes up with some subdomains that might make sense, right? So maybe I don't want hacklab.com. Maybe I want hacklab.org or hacklab.web or hacklab.tv. A lot of the time, the end user won't pay attention to the TLD. They're only going to pay attention to the domain name. So if you're registering any customer name, you can have that customer name just be the domain. So I could do hacklab.wa.au or any of these, and I might get by. And especially if you're doing like .NET or .coms with a third one, most users will not notice this. They don't go that far. They say, oh, that says hacklab.net, I'm good. My lock is closed, my SSL works, my mail system didn't put any errors on this, I'm okay to go ahead and click on this link. So the final step when you are setting up a domain name for phishing or a C2 or any of these engagements, what you want to do with your final domain name once you pick that is you want to take a look at the different sources on the net to determine if it's going to get through URL filtering. The two that I use most because they're the most common firewall types out there are Palo Alto Networks and Cisco Talos. So if we put in let's say hawklab.com here on the Palo site, it's gonna give us what it is and it says it's stock advice and tools, right? So stock advice is a good category, it's finance. Typically, SSL decryption, they will just say, nope, I'm not, I'm not gonna encrypt anything in the financial category, right? Um, you could do any URL here just to see what it looks like so you can get a category that's close to it. So if we search Bank of America, you can see the category that's, that's in financial services and you can try to find a domain in financial services. You can also look for those categories that match healthcare. So if you don't know what the healthcare category is, search a known healthcare organization like, let's see, um, hospital.org, right? I didn't click the robot. Health and medicine. 
So you want to find a URL that's in one of these two categories if possible. Talos, same thing. If we search for Hawk Lab, it will give you a web reputation. Now, this one says questionable. Now, questionable doesn't mean it's going to be blocked immediately, but it does mean that, hey, we might alert on this or we might put something on it that lets the user know that this is either newly registered or has some kind of questionable level. Now, if we search something like Bank of America here, you're going to see that this says trusted, right? The location data, where it's from, all of the different volume and things like that. So you want to make sure that whatever URL, especially if you're buying one, if you're buying a domain, that you've done these steps because you could waste your money and you could end up with a domain that's got a bad reputation or is on a block list somewhere. So check out your domains before you do this. Now, I'll post a bunch of different links in the video that you, in the bottom of the video that you can use to check your domain names and make sure that they're suitable for your phishing engagement. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll leave you again with Hack the Planet to Defend Better.